there's a lot of great conversations with educational technology, artificial intelligence, and what we can be doing with our students in the classrooms. And for me, it's really important that we actually start this at an earlier age. Kids are using this at younger and younger ages. And I think that's a great thing, but I also think it's a little bit terrifying if they don't actually have guidance. And so this is why I loved talking to Kristen Brooks, who is currently a teacher at a K-5 school, and she also presents on these topics as well. And she shares a lot of insights based on her experience in the classroom, things that she's doing right now. And she so willingly gives these ideas to others as well. So Kristen has some really great perspectives, some really great ideas. She also has a free book that you can find out about uh, at the beginning of the podcast that you are more than welcome to download and have access to. And I love that she shares this because how do we actually help our youngest learners kind of navigate this? So we're kind of helping them develop really great habits as they enter into middle school and high school and beyond. So I, I hope you enjoy it. I really love talking to Kristen. She's an absolutely wonderful person, has brilliant ideas. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kroos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am blessed today to have Kristen Brooks, who is a, a teacher currently in uh, Georgia with Cherokee County. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And I've actually, you know, I, I've connected with Cherokee County and some, some wonderful, wonderful uh, people in the area. And I, Chris and I actually connected at, at several conferences. And I was saying this in our, you know, three questions podcast. One of the things that I love because we were actually presenting at the same time, people are just so excited coming out of your sessions and, you know, feel that the stuff that you're doing is just really, really powerful. It's really, really purposeful and, you know, really kind of catering to the moment. And so not only does she present, she teaches full time and um, she has a book that is in the description down below. We're going to talk a lot more about it than we did in the last podcast. It is called Steam for Little Learners. It is totally free. You can download it and I'm going to ask you about it. But Kristen, thanks for being on the podcast. If you can tell us who you are, what you do today, how you got there, it's a good place to start. Okay. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm just so excited to be here. Um, I love doing podcasts. I just think they're really a fun way to connect with other educators and people uh, across the globe. And um, yes, like you said, I am Kristen Brooks and I teach kindergarten through fifth grade um, technology. And we, I really strive to my students that we are in the tech lab to create. And so whatever they have in front of them whatever piece of technology um, we use all different pieces and we just choose to create items more than we consume items in my class so we use a lot of creativity and just imagination and just trying to teach them how to use devices in other ways that they may not typically use them in class so that's kind of my all-around goal in life <laughs> Yeah, well, and I go and present at conferences too. So, and this is my 29th year of teaching. So I I think that's a really important aspect, but I think part of it too is, this is a conversation that kind of gets left out. I don't think they're just creating. They're, you know, you have to kind of have some base skills, develop some knowledge. Yeah. And this is something, you know, um, I've really been focusing on is, um, there's a lot of artificial intelligence stuff that it's like, oh, just do this and it'll create it for you. I'm like, well, <laughs> There's some good to that if it's low right. level thinking, but if you don't know, understand how to create things on your own, like what do we actually lose in that as well? Mm -hmm. So I think that, that creation process, can you like give us like one or two examples, something your students have created recently, something that um, they're actually making. I'd love to hear about that. Okay. So recently um, they have two projects that I kind of gauge on how they respond to a project as to whether we do it again, you know, or switch hmm. it around, that kind of thing. And I will say that um, I think it was about two, two weeks ago, we did GarageBand. And we have done GarageBand before, but I set it up a little bit different this year. And they were creating a theme song, like their own personal, like, pump you up right. kind of theme song. And we are going to add that to a video in a few weeks, but I wanted them to really think about it and think about, you know, what kind of things make them filled with joy and happiness. And like, I kind of said, you know, how, when the baseball players come up and they play their song, like their walk-up song, yeah. I was like, just let's create our own walk-up song that like, if you just put it in your pocket and you could play it whenever, when you hear it, you're like, 
that's my song. My day is going to be great now, you know? So that was the theme of creating it. And they have not put GarageBand down since. Like, even though we've had other activities to do, they're like, okay, but as soon as I finish this, can I go get on GarageBand? And I'm like, yes, you can. <laughs> so I love that, that they're just so excited about it. I've had parents send me some emails that I learned how to do GarageBand. Cause I always say that at the end of class. And I was like, Hey friends, whatever you learned today, you could go home. You could share it with a I grandparent. You could that. share it with an aunt or uncle. You could share it with a big brother, or big sister. A lot of people don't even know they have it in their pocket on their phone. So I've had a lot of people share it with random folks in their family or neighbors. So it's really fun. Yeah. So that's one thing that they have done recently that they just really, really loved. Do you know, I, I can't remember. I, I'm pretty sure it's John Spencer. I, it's just not me. I like, I, I, if I was going to guess it was John Spencer who wrote something about and I thought about this when you're talking about, about audio signatures mm. and that kind of stuck out to me is that, you know, if you're dum dum, that's Netflix, right? Like there's like little, <laughs> there's like little things that have audio signatures and actually that's something you're kind of doing with your students right now is that they're actually creating an audio, like yes. kind of that audio signature. That's kind yes, of a cool, cool, <laughs> cool concept. Right. And I, you know, I have like little audio signatures on the podcast and I'm like, I don't right. know if I like them and you know, if I want to change my signature kind of thing. So that that's something cause I, you know, you, you, there is a connection to like, when you hear this, you, do you think of that? And what does that, that kind of look like? Uh, tell us about the, the book steam for little learners. And like I said, okay. it's in the description down below, totally free downloadable, which first of all, before you get into it, why would you do that? Like, why would you do that? And I like, I, I, I know why, cause I asked you before, but you know, a lot of people are going to like, Hey, what's the catch, right? What, what's the catch? Why is it free? Right? There's, so you, there's uh, no catch. There's no catch. Um, I'm an Apple distinguished educator. Um, and we, there was four, five of us total. And we really just felt like there was something kind of missing in that genre of the steam STEM area that little learners, there wasn't a lot to help teachers, like a lot of districts are saying, Hey, we're adding in steam and we're doing it in the classroom. And we just want you to add that in. And then that's all they say. And the teacher's like, okay, I'll get right, right. on that. And they're just not really sure what to do. So we just wanted to put a resource out there um, because all of us as educators, we just, we like sharing with other educators. And I just don't want somebody to go recreate the wheel when it's already out there somewhere, just go get it, use it for free. Um, it's full of 30 lessons, 30 activities. And we try to make them super simple so that if you don't have a clue and you have these iPads and you're like, what do I do with this? We tried to make them very simple to put into another lesson or add it in during, you know, a little 15 minute slot and just add in your steam. Yeah. And you know, it, like we were kind of talking about this before, you know, like I have books that I sell. And I have like, you know, courses that I sell, but if you don't want to ever buy anything from me, I have so much content that I've created because it is partly me sharing my learning and, you know, mm -hmm. um, and there is a kind of like this balance too, right? Like this is like, my work is this kind of too, but yeah. you know, like I love this podcast because it is totally free. You can, there's yep. a million different ways you can listen to it or watch it or whatever and hope hopefully that you know how we share with one another can kind of really um elevate and the, the other thing too this is really important to me without this podcast um i don't get to talk to great people like you and people who don't know you who know me all of a sudden get to know you and i'm this has totally happened some people like listen to my podcast for me and then they hear from you and then i'm out like i get kicked <laughs> out you're like yeah i you know, I heard this person and like, yeah, now I just fall. I just, that's their stuff. And I'm like, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Yeah. You know, that, that's, a, that's a blessing. Okay. So tell us about the book. Like what, what do you do? Um, maybe give us a, a, a sample from it. Like, I know you, I don't know you give an actual sample because it is like, it is free. You can give all the samples yeah. to be honest with you, but like, tell us a little bit, like kind of how you go through this book and you know, what ed uh, educators would expect. Yeah, I mean, it starts out, it's an interactive book. Um, like you said, it's on Apple Books. It's free. Just go and download it. And the cool part is, is that um, when we designed it, we wanted to make it as easy as possible. And so we, the first, you know, couple pages explain the book, but then um, there's a page that actually has all 30 activities. 
mm-hmm. and you can just like look through them and tap wow. on it and it'll take you straight over to the one that you tapped on. So it is pretty cool in that aspect. So you don't have to read it from beginning to end and do the lessons in any certain order. Um, there might be one that like matches better with what your unit is or what you're studying at that time. So we wanted to make it so that you could start and stop anywhere that you felt comfortable. Um, we also did it um, with using apps. So on each lesson, it says what app it is using, or some some of them have a few different apps. Mm-hmm. And we felt like that would be helpful too. Like maybe, um, you know, there might be times where I teach only Keynote and I want all activities just about Keynote. You know, maybe that's mm-hmm. the way your curriculum is set up. So we wanted to make it so that you could go and find those things very easily if that's the way that you wanted to do it. So um, yeah, I just feel like it's very easy to understand. We tried to make the directions very simple. Um, a lot of the lessons that I put in, I actually recorded a video. Mm. Uh, I love videos. I love learning from videos. Right. So if I can see it, I can usually figure it out and understand it. And I wanted to give teachers, um, I know that when I have a chance to create a video for my students, depending on how they understand things, like I'll stand there and I'll explain it, I'll talk about it, I'll point things out, I'll go through how to create what we're going to create. But a lot of times if I have a chance to make a video or I can find one made by another educator, (laughs) that I'll leave it playing on repeat on the board because there are some students that just love to just, they've listened but they love to just sit and watch and like take it in that way. And so I love to have that opportunity too. So, so yeah, that's a little synopsis of it. So, so as a, as a, a current classroom teacher, like mm-hmm. you've used some of these own lessons, obviously yes. in your own practice, right? Like, did you, yes. was that part of the thinking is that yes. like, Hey, I want to do it in my class, see how it goes. Cause I don't want to like give yes. something. I don't know. Like, <laughs> how, how, like, how did you decide what went into it? Because I, I, I guarantee you as many as you, did you probably could do quadruple right probably. Corner, right and so well, like there might there decide? might be more books coming well there you go there you go and so how did you decide <laughs> that? Like, how did you decide that process um well the five of us we all kind of discussed it um and talked about what we were looking for and the design just the design process itself mm-hmm. and we kind of went along that theme and really tried to pare it down because we felt like Potentially, we could do more books later. So we wanted these to be our easiest items for, like I said, pre-K through like second or third. We didn't really put numbers on it because we felt like every district, every country does things differently. So we just said this one is for little learners because little could be whatever your definition of that. Right. So here, here's something, and I'm I'm curious about this because you're at a K five school, right? Mm Hmm. So when you're at a K-5 school and you're doing some of this stuff and I'm not, and I don't know enough about your district to say this, but I've seen it where we have someone who's like you has an ability, gets kids really focused on creation. And then they go to grade six to eight or six, nine, whatever your setup is for, you know, middle schools. I'm I'm assuming six to eight, right? Mm -hmm. Is that fair? It is. And then they're not doing that stuff. And then like, How do you, maybe how do you ensure that it's happening at the next level? Because that would be such a drop off. And I've I've seen this, right? Where, Mm -hmm. um, like one of my goals when I was a principal K to six school was to put some pressure on the, you know, seven to 12 people. Like, Mm -hmm. hey, like the the stuff you're doing right now, our kids are surpassing that. And so you got to be ready and and you got to think differently about what you're doing. Yes. I will say that um, when I first started doing all of this and I was at Woodstock Elementary, that I got the one of the greatest compliments of my career when I happened to see the middle school media specialist at um, mm-hmm. something for the district. And she came up to me, she gave me this huge hug. And she goes, I just have to tell you that every year when I get the incoming sixth graders, as soon as I give them one activity to do, she goes, I can in my head pick out who came from your school and who came from a different school. <laughs> and I was like, that is good, I guess. And she's right. like, no, I just, she goes, it gives me the ability to have those kids, right. you know, help the other students that may not know this or that. She goes, you know, it's not like it's a total drop off, but right. she just said that, you know, she could kind of sometimes tell. So it, it, it made my day. Um, and I feel like our district focuses really hard to have those things at the middle school and the high school level. In fact, they had those first, which is part of the reason I felt like we needed it in elementary right. is I felt like we should get the kids ready for them instead of them having to teach all of these things once they got to the middle school and the high school. Yeah. So 
I, I feel like, you know, our district does a very good job, but I have heard of districts that have that struggling issue. And what I have said to some students that were leaving to maybe move to another state or another district, I just said, hey, friends, you know, I always try to show them how to get to things, not just like the district way, but like I do a lot with Microsoft and Minecraft. And so I would show them, okay, how to build something, not just always click on a link to get to it. Does that make sense? Right. So I would show them from the beginning, like from point A, so that when they left and maybe they weren't in my district or it's summer break, they right. can still go in and create and not have to have something from me generated that they could just go in and start on their own project that they wanted to make. I do that a lot with Adobe Express as well, um, that we you know start sometimes from a link, but then I also always make sure they're aware of how to start just a, something on their own as well. Yeah. And that, that, that's something that that's a good, like, these are good problems. And these are the problems that we should try to create. And mm -hmm. my work for years has been focused on that. You don't want that. You can no, no offense that you can identify kids from this school and this school, like they all come with these really, but that, that takes some, a lot of focus on the district level and to ensure um, opportunities for kids. And it's not, it's not saying like, all kids should be doing the stuff you're doing and but every kid should have like a opportunity for really high quality learning. So I, I, I just think that's um, absolutely amazing. All right. So you, you have a big focus on creation. Mm -hmm. So this is a the big topic in I don't think I, I don't want to say education I want to say the world because it is is artificial intelligence. <laughs> I'm watching I, I was just actually right before I talked to you. Um, I was watching um, geez, I can't remember his name, but he's so uh, it's maybe Marcus Brownlee, I'm, I can't remember his name, but he is like, um, he's a, a YouTuber that talks about tech trends and he, he showed, he, and I've, I've seen it before, but like when I like what to hear what he has to say about it yeah. was how basically you can make like stock footage, your own, there's the, the new um, thing from open AI where they're basically, you can just say, make this scene and it's totally human. And if you look for it, you can actually see it's not real, but like, mm -hmm. if you, if you didn't, if you weren't looking for it, you wouldn't know. Right. So what do you see kind of like in this time where we have all this stuff with artificial intelligence and the thing he kept saying over and over, over again, is that, and I've said this too, this is the worst it's going to be from this day forward. It only gets better. So like, right. how do you kind of kind of get people focusing on the stuff that's coming with artificial intelligence, that the stuff that's already here, but also focus on ensuring kids have the ability to create. Yes. Um, I do think that it is like you're saying is such a huge topic right now. I actually did present at ISTE last summer and at FETC um, and at GAETC about AI and using it for creative purposes. And I'm doing another one this summer at ISTE, just a little plug. If anybody's yeah. going to be there, you definitely could come. But it's more for our younger students and how AI, I feel like, should be introduced to them. Um, with me, I've done it with third, fourth, and fifth grade, and I've used Adobe Express. And I really used it as a way to talk to them about it because on the first day before we had done anything with it. And I had honestly not even mentioned it before that day, even though months before I was planning for a presentation, um, I just said, you know, hey, I'm just curious. Let's just have a discussion in the room. Raise your hand if you know about AI. Every hand went up. And I said, okay, let's just talk about what do you know? Like, what do you think it is? What are you positive that it is? What are you unsure that it is? And we just had this great discussion. And it was really just cool. Like I loved it. I felt like it was a great time for me to connect with my students. And then we went on to look at a very simple um, project. We basically asked the AI inside of Adobe Express to create a um, uh, like a character, but it was like a mashup of two other things. So like you would say, I would like a unicorn and a cow. Right. and see what it came out with. And uh, and then we would add in other adjectives, you know, that is singing and has headphones on and has pink hair or whatever. So um, it was really fun. The kids had a great time. But it when I showed them the demonstration, I put in something. And when it popped up, I would say, now, friends, I know that AI is, you know, 
some of y'all said, like, it's the smartest thing in the whole wide world. And I said, and I see what you're talking about. I said, but your brain as a human and as a student is always going to be able to decipher and understand things more than the AI. Mm -hmm. And I would say, because a lot of times I ask the kids before I'm typing in what we want. And somebody said, it's like a name of a dance, like, oh, I knew it. Gritty. Mm -hmm. yeah, That's like the name of a dance. The, the, they said like the, the unicorn cow doing the gritty. And I was like, okay, so let's talk about this before I push enter. Is AI as a computer going to understand what the gritty is? I said, because for me, I knew because y'all talk about that kind of stuff, but right. my mom who's 83 would not know what the right. gritty is. And I said, so, or my dad rather, either one of them. And I said, you know, they would think like sandpaper, like it's gritty. Right. And right. I said, so what's AI going to think? And so having us be able to talk about those things in their mind, they were like, oh, I get it. Like I have to say something like doing a dance or like you can't use these words that are just, you know, words right. that. Did it know? I got to know. Did it know? What the it did was? not. It did not. It oh, did wow. not know what the gritty was. And we then have tried other things to see like, you know, and I say to them, I'm like, just try it out and see if it'll know. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that it will not. Um, but, you know, that was a great learning time. Mm -hmm. And I felt like with students, if we don't talk about it and we just try to push it under the rug, they're going to go find out on their own. Right. I would rather as an educator, have them find out the educational way to use it correctly than just to go and start just having it write all their papers for them mm -hmm. instead of teaching them to write their paper and then maybe take sections and put it in or proofread it that way. Um, so we've had a lot of discussion before we ever started using it. And I will also say that um, my students, I would also say when it would come back with the picture, sometimes because it's just grabbing images from the internet and smushing them together, it would be, you know, their unicorn cow would have eight legs or some random like seven legs, you know, some <laughs> random number. And I would always say, you know, if that's what you're looking for, then okay. But typically that's probably not what you're looking for. Right. And so it'd give them the chance to really look at what was being brought up with just pictures mm -hmm. and being able to decide, okay, is that what I had in my head before I put it in there? Is that what I was kind of looking for? And if not, going back and putting in more words or changing their prompt, so to speak. So I really loved all of those aspects with using it with my students. It's like, well, obviously the name would be the Unicow. <laughs> yes, the Unicow. The Unicow. So I love that. You know, so I'm watching a bunch of this stuff and, uh, you know, working with a lot of schools on really kind of the foundational aspects, like things that you're talking about, like, what do you, how are you getting kids to think? How are you getting actually to use this almost as a second brain, as opposed to replacing mm -hmm. our brain? And how do you use this to, um, to focus on creativity still? Yes. And what I'm actually really pleasantly surprised by, and I don't know if I felt this way when chat GPT was all over the place. And this is like, this is only like a year and a couple of <laughs> months ago that immediately so many schools started blocking it, but it's like, feels like there's a more proactive approach that's happening in education across the board, which is wonderful. And I think yes. hopefully we've learned lessons from like COVID and from social media and from like, just even having the internet, you know, all of those things. So it's kind of nice to see uh, more pe people doing that and blessed that we have schools that like yours that have people like you leading the way. So Kristen, just so grateful to have met you to, um, be able to help people see all of the incredible things you're doing in your classroom. So thanks for taking the time to be on the podcast. I, I really enjoyed having conversation. And I want it per, selfishly, I wanted to get to know you better too, because like we've only seen each other in passing. So I wanted to just sit down and talk. Yes, I completely 1000% agree because literally almost every time I see you, I'm like, oh, hey, oh, quick you selfie. Just, okay, I gotta go. <laughs> I love Running it. to my next session. So I agree. I love, I love chatting with other educators and just seeing like the, I feel like I don't ever want to be the smartest brain in the room. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like if everybody shares their brain knowledge that, you know, that, that we can all learn from each other and taking the time to sit down and have those conversations is where that happens. So I love doing things like this. So thank you so much for having me and asking yeah. me. It's such an honor to be asked to be on your podcast. Well, I hate to tell you this, but you are the smartest brain in the zoom. So <laughs> no, yeah, you were, and that's all good. I'm good with that. So 
check out still because I can't do that. That's what you just had to turn. <laughs> there it is. So hey, check out the books team for little learners. It is free to download below. Kristen, thank you so much. You can check out all of uh, Kristen's socials. Whatever I want to just throw questions at her too. If you are like going through this stuff, I know she is more than willing to help. And so how blessed it was to have you on. Thanks everyone for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day.